An important condition to the infringement provisions of the Copyright Act is set out in Section 14 Sub 1, which provides that an infringing act need not be done in relation to the entire work or other subject matter. It need only be done in relation to a substantial part. Substantial part is not defined in the Copyright Act, but there has been significant case law discussing its meaning. In fact, substantial part is frequently an issue of dispute between parties. Whether a substantial part has been used is determined by looking both at the quantity and the quality of the part used. This is assessed as against the plaintiff's work as a whole. It does not matter how much of the defendant's work incorporates the part taken. Quality is the most important factor here, not quantity. This means that a part may be substantial even if it is small, so long as it comprises an important part of the plaintiff's work. Courts will sometimes use terms like the core, the essential part, or the heart of the plaintiff's work when discussing a part that is small but substantial in terms of quality. Courts will look at the originality of the part used when deciding if it is substantial. If the defendant has only copied or used unoriginal parts of the plaintiff's work, such as extracting historical facts and information, then there will not be an infringement even if the parts taken were substantial in terms of quantity. This also raises the idea-expression distinction again. A substantial part will not have been taken if only the underlying ideas or concepts have been used. The concept of substantial part is best understood by looking to the case law. In the second half of this video, I will briefly discuss the relevant holdings in three important cases in this area. The Panel Case, Ice TV and the Kookaburra Case. In Network 10 and TCN Channel 9, Network 10 ran a popular TV program called The Panel, in which a panel of commentators talked and joked about things that had happened in society and media that week. In the course of this program, Network 10 rebroadcast short snippets from some Channel 9 programs. For example, they copied 10 seconds from the inaugural Alan Border Medal Dinner broadcast to show Glenn McGrath's reaction to winning Australian Cricket Player of the Year. And they copied 9 seconds of footage of a child yawning during an interview on the Today Show. The High Court held that the question of quality arises with respect to both Part 3 works and Part 4 subject matter. But most importantly, they emphasise that substantial part is always a matter of fact and degree. This means you must look to the plaintiff's work as a whole, including its purpose and message. In the context of the whole, is the part taken a material and important part? Is it a highlight or a memorable part? The context will always matter. So it is important to remember, substantial part is a matter of fact and degree. In Ice TV and Nine Network, Ice TV sought to provide an electronic television guide, which they called the Ice Guide. They took time and title information for the television programs listed in Channel 9's weekly schedule of programs. However, Ice TV created their own descriptions of the TV programs for their Ice Guide. Channel 9 alleged that Ice TV had copied a substantial part of their weekly schedule, which was a literary work. The High Court emphasised that you must always look to the quality when determining substantial part. Here, Ice TV had only taken the unoriginal aspects of the Channel 9 weekly schedules. The pure information relating to the time TV programs were broadcast and what they were called. The High Court held that Ice TV had not taken a substantial part and not infringed copyright. So this case tells us that the relative originality of the part taken will inform the assessment of quality for the purposes of substantial part. The less original, the less likely the part taken is to be substantial. The last case I will cover is EMI Songs and Larrikin, also known as the Kookaburra case. 
This case involved Men at Work's song Down Under. The claim was that the flute riff in Down Under reproduced two bars from the children's folk melody Kookaburra Sits in the Old Gum Tree. This was allegedly done to inject Australian flavour into the song. The full federal court found that there was perceptive objective similarity between the two works, notwithstanding that this similarity had gone unnoticed for over 20 years until it was raised in an episode of the ABC program, Spicks and Specs. In relation to substantial part, the court found that Men at Work had taken two bars from the Kookaburra song, which was a four-bar work or eight bars when sung as a round. However, the quantity of the taking was less important than the quality. The court held that the part copied was the basic hook of the Kookaburra song, or its signature, and so was qualitatively important. Men at Work had therefore used a substantial part of the song and had infringed copyright.